I'm Benita Times with the Westchester Chronicle. Here's what's been going on in the borough in the month of March. At the Borough Council work session, a representative from the Westchester Planning Commission gave a presentation about the feasibility of converting eligible garages and historical carriage houses into accessory dwelling units, or ADUs, within the alleyways of the borough. The ADUs would be single unit dwellings and would be under the control of the owner of the house on the main property. The intent of the projects would be, in their terms, to restore the historic character of Westchester alleys. There are currently over a hundred historic carriage houses within the borough that fall under the historic carriage house regulations. The plan would be for new ADUs to also abide by those regulations. While the council voiced their support of the ADUs, there were concerns from Councilwoman Sheila Vaccaro about potential flooding and drainage issues due to the new buildings being built. Mayor Lillian DeBaptiste requested for firm verbiage in regards to language about the units being restricted to homeowners for the time being. A resident was concerned that despite zoning regulations, the units would eventually end up only being rented out to students. More information about ADUs and the historic carriage house regulations can be found on the Westchester website, west-chester.com. Council then discussed the preliminary land development application for the proposed apartment complex at 250 East Market Street, also known as the location of the old Rubensteins and Salvation Army store. A representative for the project mainly fielded questions regarding drainage issues and the potential for flooding in the areas around Goose Creek. In particular, Councilperson Nick Allen was hesitant to grant the project a waiver if the new complex in his ward was not guaranteed to lower the flood levels. He noted that homes and buildings in the second ward have been damaged in the past due to the high flood levels. Councilwoman Vaccaro wanted to know if the proposed green spaces on the property would eventually end up muddy due to the constant flooding. Mayor de Baptiste also wished to know if the new structure would be able to handle a historic flood such as the ones caused by Hurricane Ida last year. The representative for the project explained that due to the building having elevated parking, stormwater would be able to flow through the complex rather than around it, which would in turn reduce the flood levels by approximately six inches. He then stated that there will still be some flooding, but nothing that would be substantial. The council voted 6-0 to approve the preliminary application and move it forward to its next stage. Once again, the council discussed the future of Gay Street and once again, their discussion has pushed it forward to next month. Each of the council members brought forth their opinions on what times would be more beneficial to borough residents and visitors. Council President Mike Serfano asked if it was feasible to only shut down the street on weekends, in which borough manager Sean Metric noted that it would multiply the labor costs of placing and removing the protective barriers by however many weeks the street would be closed, as opposed to only placing them out once for a year-round shutdown. The when and how of the potential closure were not the only factors that were causes for concern. Councilman Bernie Flynn noted that the previous closures had been a total nightmare for service trucks, delivery of vehicles, and emergency services. Both the police chief and the fire chief have indicated that they are not in support of Gay Street closing. Council also had to consider the numerous construction and infrastructure projects, including, but not limited to, the Pico Harmony project, building construction and renovations, and street paving projects that would be affected. Furthermore, Business Improvement District Executive Director John O'Brien reminded the Council that all of their considerations would be rendered moot as the borough has not yet received full control over Gay Street from PennDOT. In light of this, the Council voted to table the discussion for April's Council meetings. Finally, the Council voted to change the starting times for future work and voting sessions. Councilman Flynn suggested a start time for 6 o'clock. However, that time was considered difficult for Councilwoman Lisa Dorsey, who was not present for the voting session. The council then decided on a new start time of 6.30, which passed 6.0. The new start times will begin in May to give residents enough time to adjust to the new schedule. Moving on to community events, the 24th annual CRC Streams Cleanup held by the Chester Ridley Crumb Watersheds Association took place on the 26th where approximately 1,000 participants volunteered to clean up the streams of the Chester, Ridley, and Crumb Creek watersheds. About 60 residents, including a local Boy Scout troop, met up at the Public Works Building here in Westchester to clean up Goose Creek and the surrounding areas. 
Led by CRC Watershed Cleanup Site Coordinator Courtney Finneran, the Westchester volunteers managed to pull out dozens of trash bags worth of plastic, flyaway baseballs, lost clothing, food containers, cans, bottles, appliances, and of course, garbage from Goose Creek. The Westchester Area School District held their monthly school board meeting on the 29th, where it was packed with educators, parents, and a significant number of high school students. While some were there to discuss the recently revealed PSAT scores or the board's approval of their new three-year plan, the majority of the four-hour meeting focused on the board's approval of the committee recommendation to retain the high school library books, Escaping a Sinking Ship, and Gender Queer, a Memoir. Both books, the latter especially, have been the source of an outcry by some parents that the content within their pages were not appropriate for their students. Because of these complaints, the books were reviewed by a committee to determine if they would be pulled from library shelves within the district. Many parents and high school students came to speak to the board to voice their support for gender queer as a symbol of representation for LGBTQ plus individuals. Students and members of School-Based Gender Sexuality Alliance, or GSA clubs, spoke about their experiences and the challenges they face in school and in their communities. Parents and community members spoke of the board's pledge to ensure that all students are welcome and valued members of their schools and appealed to the school district's stance on equity, diversity, and inclusion. The board approved the recommendation for the books to remain on shelves with only Stacey Wombly dissenting on the basis that the vote should be held after the Education Committee meeting next month. The following day, March 29th, Judge Mahone removed five members of the Westchester School Board from their positions. Those removed were Board President Sue Tiernan and Board Members Joyce Chester, Kate Shaw, Karen Herman, and Daryl Durnell. The move came after a local parent and former candidate for mayor, Beth Ann Rossica, filed paperwork calling for their removal after last year's mass mandate vote. The judge stated that the removal of the board members had nothing to do with the merit of the case, but rather that the school board did not respond to the request in the time required, and therefore issued a default judgment. On Wednesday the 30th, lawyers for the school district filed a motion in the Court of Common Pleas to reconsider the move, claiming that they had until April 4th to respond. It seems that there is a dispute over when the original paperwork was served to the district and how long they had to respond. We reached out to the school district for more information, but they did not respond to our voicemail. We will follow this story, so stay tuned for updates. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please join us next time as we resume our coverage and live streams of local government meetings. Now, if you'd like to see us cover more meetings, events, or provide more information about things going on around town, please consider sponsoring our show via Patreon. Our goal is to make community-funded news and not have to rely on ads. And we will produce as much as we can with the budget you give us. So please like and share us on Facebook and subscribe on YouTube. It's the easiest way to support us and help us bring you the news. Finally, if you have a news tip, an event you'd like us to cover, or just want to say hi, you can reach us via email at westchesterchronicle at gmail.com. We look forward to hearing from you. Our program is produced by Crimson Planet Media and distributed by KeystoneDigital.tv. Our music is by Doug Keller. Thank you for your time, and we hope to see you soon. Until then, I'm Benita Ties with the Westchester Chronicle.